Hey there, and welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. If you're looking to get more sales, more customers, master your marketing, and ultimately take control of your retail or e-commerce business, then you're in the right place. I'm Selena Knight, a retail growth strategist and multi-award winning store owner whose superpower is uncovering exactly what your business requires to move to the next level. I'll provide you with the strategies, the tools, and the insight you need to scale your store. All you need to do is take action. Ready to get started? So I've just sat down to record this episode intro and my dogs have decided it is time to go for a walk. So if you hear that noise in the background of my dogs whining and jumping around, they think it's time to go for a walk, but it isn't. Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. I'm your host, Selena Knight. I am passionate about helping you, the retail or e-commerce store owner, to scale your business and to create something that is more than a job, to create a business that works for you. And if that's the kind of thing that you are looking for, then you, my friend, are in exactly the right place. Now, today's episode with Jason Williamson is pretty freaking amazing. If you love all things marketing, then I would say, honestly, get yourself a pen and paper or grab that phone, however you take notes, because Jason is going to walk you step by step through an amazing marketing strategy that you can implement in your business. So consider this your warning. I'll chat on for another couple of minutes while you go and get yourself organized. Maybe you can bookmark this episode if you are listening on the go, but you're going to want to hear this episode right through to the end. All right, so now I have to fill in a couple of minutes to get yourself organized. Uh, Let me give you an update on what has been happening here inside The Retail Strategist, which is officially the name of our company. If you didn't know, that is our legal trading name, The Retail Strategists, because That is what my team and I do. Retail strategy. Pretty boring, but it does what it says on the box, right? (laughs) Well, this week we have been putting the beginning touches, not the finishing touches, but the beginning touches on our annual event, the Retail Academy Live. We will be having it in the first week of September in the gorgeous, very hip, excellent coffee, totally arty, Melbourne, Victoria. So if you are inside of my programs and you have been thinking, yes, I want to come to the Retail Academy live. I know that we've had to put it off because of COVID for the last couple of years, but my friends, we are good to go this year. We are back on providing, you know, no more pandemics or anything, but we are back on and we are starting to fill up the guest list. We are writing out the topics. We are getting all the stuff that you guys need and jamming it into two whole days of real, in-person, live connections, live strategy, live people on a stage, giving you good stuff that you can implement in your business. So if you have one of my prized golden tickets to that event, Make sure you log into the portal and that you secure your seat. We are limited on space. And honestly, this event fills up fast. So if you think you might like to come, I would highly suggest that you grab your spot now. Lots more details coming, but I just wanted to give you a heads up because it is only four months away, which sounds like a really long time. But trust me, when you are planning a big event like this, four months goes like that. That's a snap of my fingers in case you didn't hear it. So on top of that, we have been putting gamification inside all of our programs. We have spent months getting all of this coded out because I know that learning can be really difficult. I mean, finding the information is one thing, watching it is another, but actually getting that stuff to go into your brain and stick we all learn in different ways. So we've been working with a development company to be putting gamification 
inside of all of our programs. So you'll click off some buttons, you'll hear some cool noises, you will get rewards. So yes, this is kind of a rewards program in disguise. We are working on those rewards. We've already got a whole bunch of them put in place and some of them are freaking amazing. Some of them are great resources that you can use that would normally be paid, but we're going to gift them to you once you get to a certain level of points. But there are others like having my team consult for you in your business. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You will get the opportunity to have my team come into your business and give you advice on what you can do to grow your business. I mean, is that not the bee's knees? I mean, that is worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And you get it just for doing the work. Yep. (laughs) You show up, you implement what you've learned, you check off the task, you get that dopamine and the serotonin hits, and you never know what you might be rewarded with. But before we jump into today's episode, I would love you to tell me, when it comes to rewards, do you like to be surprised or do you want this written out? Like, do you want to see a chart that tells you exactly what you get? Because I am on team surprise. I am firmly of the belief that if something unexpected turns up, something unexpected being some kind of reward, turns up in your inbox or in an SMS, you get so much more excitement out of that. It is just out of the blue, a surprise, a present. That to me is the ultimate. But there are others on my team who are team charted out, like have a chart so that people know how many points they need to get in order to get this thing. I'm the boss, so I get the final say. (laughs) But I would love to know, would you be more inclined to take action or would you fake it? Would you just press all the buttons to say that you've done all the things in order to get the rewards? I didn't even think about that until now. Or do you love the unexpected bonuses? I would love it if you could drop me a message on the social media post where you see this episode go live and let me know, are you team surprise or are you team chart? Is chart the right word? I'm going to go with that. Team surprise, team chart. I would love to know because, hey, at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about you guys. What keeps you engaged? What keeps you inspired? What keeps you motivated? Let me know on the social media post, whether it's Facebook or Instagram for or even LinkedIn for this episode. Alrighty, I feel like I've chatted enough. I've given you the time to get yourself a pen and paper or to pull out that iPad or grab your phone into the notes section and get yourself prepared for today's episode. Marketing master Jason Williamson is going to be walking you step by step through an amazing strategy that you can implement in your business. Guys, this stuff is gold. Remember, if you want to grab your ticket to the Retail Academy Live and you have already received one of my golden tickets or it's inside of your portal, grab your seat now because I cannot guarantee that it will still be there in a few weeks or a few months because this event rocks. Alrighty, let's jump into today's episode with Marketing Master Jason Williamson. Hey there, and welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. You're going to love today's episode because we are talking all about one of my most favorite things in the world, which you probably hate, which is SMS marketing. Now, love it or hate it, the simple fact is it works. Now, I have Jason K. Williamson. Did I get that right? Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. just like, I, it's the K that stuffs me up. I'm like, Jason K. Okay. You know why? If you search Jason Williamson on on the internet, I don't pop up. Oh, really? <laughs> Is it Jason like, it feels like, a, it feels like a country and Western singer. There's, there's a singer. Uh, there's Is a there singer really? That pops up instead. <laughs> Bang singers. All right. Jason K. Williamson, AKA the bearded marketer. Have I got that bit right? Uh, nailed it. Nailed it. Great. All right. We're going to be talking about SMS. And the trials and tribulations. Now, fun thing, Jason, I forgot to tell you this before we jumped on. I literally, just before I came on this podcast, was in a Facebook group, you know, wasting my five minutes between podcasts. And someone said, do you use SMS marketing? And I write back and go, hell yeah, we do. Best thing ever. And all these people are saying, 
I will never use it because it upsets me. It annoys me. I would never put my customers through that. And all I'm sitting here thinking is, you guys are idiots because you are leaving money on the table and you're also missing a key part of customer engagement. So on today's episode, not only are we going to give you a boatload of strategies, but we're also going to talk about how freaking awesome SMS is. And if you aren't using it, you are losing money. Welcome to the show, Jason K. Williamson. <laughs> mm, thanks so much for having me. I always love to jump on brand new, like brand new podcasts that I've never, you know, obviously been on or heard of on. It's, it's just an amazing experience for me to kind of like reach out to a new audience and just meet new people. Um, hopefully I can deliver a lot of value today. Uh, I do always say this when I jump on a podcast, I'm very, very impact driven. I like to give you, I don't like to talk fluff. Um, I've never been a theory type of person. I'm a very action based type of person. So everything I do say in this podcast will be actionable. So if anybody's listening and they have like, you know, you, you've got a pen and paper near you and you actually really want to take notes on this, I highly encourage that you grab a pen and paper, you take notes, you put a sock on your door, you make sure nobody interrupts you. And I will be dropping very, very high impact actionable items in this. So pay attention and um, hopefully I can give you some value. And you can see why we brought him on the show, right? Because this is what we are about. We are about taking action. So for those of people who don't know you, tell us a little bit about what you do before we jump into the joys of SMS and your amazing Trojan horse horse method. Yeah. So obviously my name is Jason K. Williamson. I've been in this industry for about eight or nine years now. Um, I've been specialized in e-commerce the entire time. Um, I've worked with over 450 clients. I've helped generate north of 130 million US dollars. Um, and I work with some of the biggest brands in the world, like the Udi. So I hope that gives you a little bit of credibility. I've been doing email and SMS this entire time, probably SMS for about four years, email for about nine. Um, and in that time, I've just managed to build these systems that work every single time because you know, it doesn't matter the industry. Whatever you, whenever you build an email on SMS, it's like you said, it's all about that that engagement, that contact. It's it's speaking to the person on the platform they prefer to be communicated with. But I'll let you know that. And yeah, I, I've just been doing this for so goddamn long that I just know exactly the systems to build. And that's that's what I'm excited to talk about today. There's one particular one, like you keep, you think you mentioned the Trojan horse. That particular system, I have I probably built that over the last two years, but I have really really started to harness it. And it's at the point where it is literally just plug, play, and you just make money from it. We love that. We love that. What do you love about e-commerce? Why, why did you choose e-commerce to get into the field of? It's actually a funny story. It's actually just a good friend of mine. It's kind of one of the things I fell into. Very, very, very long story short. I hurt my knee. I used to be an electrician. I was two months from being fully qualified. All I needed was a signature. I'd finished all my schooling. I hurt my knee in the roof, had to do rehab. Um, and then I did also met a guy through network marketing, which I call network marketing the, is the gateway drug to entrepreneurship. <laughs> so me and, a, me and a guy were like, whilst I was doing the, uh, my, my um, apprenticeship, I even forgot the word for a second, it's been that long, apprenticeship. I was speaking to this guy and we were also doing network marketing. And he was like, hey, um, I just got out of network marketing. I'm doing e-commerce. I'm doing these. His, his name was Murray Edwards and he does advanced teeth whitening. He was actually one of the OGs in Australia, but like starting this. So uh, he did the Shopify and he was doing really well. And I was good friends with him. And he says, Hey, Jace, um, you know, like, why don't you get into this? And I was like, nah, I, I don't know why. I just never started a store my entire life. I just haven't. But I said, but network hey, look, marketing um, was, was selling stuff. Yeah, it was, but it was selling to people. I'm a very people person. I like what were you selling? We need to know. I was. It was called Your Health, so it was always like health supplements. Uh, okay. yeah, I think every network marketing scheme is basically that or skincare <laughs> or Tupperware or something. <laughs> well, hell um, yeah, some kind of diet shake. Yeah, it was. It was basically a diet shake. They went on more of the uh, the health approach, where it's like super greens and all that type of stuff. But so he says to me, he says, Jason, um, why don't you do some e-commerce? I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't really want to do that. But what I got into was I got into like lead gen. So I started to read Russell Brunson's. You know the the um, what's his book now? Quick, oh. Click oh, levels. yeah, yeah, dot com secrets. Yep. So I started reading that. I, uh, you got to remember at the time I was an electrician. And like I say, I injured my knee. So that what I did was I ended up taking, I had no money at the time. So I was making like 10 bucks an hour. Like you don't make much as an apprentice. I injured my knee, wasn't making much. I heard Russell Brunson was in Sydney. I got a credit card. 
I got a payment plan on the event. I got my hotel and flights on a credit card. And I told my boss I was sick for two days and, and literally went from like, I think Thursday night all the way through till Sunday. Met, met Russell, told him, and he's a, there's a guy called, he now does the, the Melbourne events. There's some seminars or some marketing events. And he, I remember meeting him and I was like, you don't know me, but one day you will. Still trying to get there. If anybody but, knows Russell, let him know I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, and, and my friend, so in this event, it was a network, sorry, it was an info marketing event. So they were teaching people. He, Russell was really talking about copywriting and, and obviously funnel building. And then there was one guy called Steven Esser. He got on stage and he's this Aussie guy. Aussie is all heck. He was like an Aussie Greek or an Aussie Italian. He's fully like, sick. So he was, he had so, he's actually one of the nerdier ones. So he wasn't like that type, but he, was, he had so much charisma and charm. I remember he told these stories and I was laughing throughout the whole thing. And I was like, this guy's awesome. And I went up and I said, I don't know what it is you do, but I want to do it. And he goes, well, what are you good at? So that you can teach people because it was info marketing, right? You had to package mm-hmm. up. I says, I don't know. I'm like 20, 21 years old or whatever I was at the time. I said, I'm like 20 years old. Um, I don't know anything. He says, well, what are you good at? I says, well, I'm good at writing. I'm good at talking and I'm good at selling. He says, can you do email? I says, I can learn. So I went away and started to research a lot of email stuff, put a little bit more courses and training on my credit card. I was going to say, did that credit card get racked up in training? <laughs> it, it definitely it definitely did. It, it just got more and more, um, like just more and more doubt on it, but eventually got out of it uh, as everybody does. Uh, and I said, to, I said to Murray, actually, I said, hey, look, um, I just learned about email marketing. I just started doing it. I says, Murray, can I do it for free? Like, can I just jump in and do it for free? And then like two months later, I think it was two or three months later, we'd made him an extra $60,000 just by like getting in Clavio and we'd set up some pop-ups and we'd set up at the time I was using Optin Monster. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> we set up some pop-ups and all of a sudden we was making him some money and he's like, dude, this is a real thing. Like you've made me money. Like I now need to pay you. Pay you. Yeah. But, so but you know, paying. kudos to him to actually say that because oh, yeah. some people could have taken you for a ride. So Murray, Murray, if anybody's ever heard of him, he was one of the the most kind of like so he, I, I consider him and a lot of people would consider him in this like Shopify kind of e-commerce dropshipping space. Definitely one of the OGs in Australia. He was definitely one of the first ones to start it. Uh, this is 10 years ago and it all started popping off. But he was like one of the most stand-up guys. You know, those people that you just know, you meet a few rare people in your life that have got a good heart. He yeah. was one of them. So I have, I have nothing but... I have not heard from him for a while, actually. I remember the last thing I heard is he had twins. And that's I probably why I, you haven't heard from him. <laughs> I guess I've kept him very busy. But yeah, he says, um, and then, and then when I did my knee in my roof, uh, in a roof, he was like, Hey, Jace, he goes, you've got a choice here. He says, you can finish your apprenticeship and become an electrician and that can be it for the rest of your life. Or you can come and work with me, be the manager, manager of my company. I need somebody to structure things daily because I don't have the time. He says, I want you to do it, but I'm only going to give you three months. He says, and by then I need you to build your own business. And then the strangest thing happened is I says, fuck it. I'm in. Well, you're it, you're twenty something years old, right? Yeah, you're early but 20s. I was two months from the end of a uh, then an end of apprenticeship that I've been doing it for five years. Yeah, but you and can always I go back. That in, it, it, I'm and, done. And, and you're young though. Like this yeah. is the difference. When you're young, you can make big you, decisions like that, like life changing I mean, decisions. I'll tell you, my parents weren't happy. I can imagine they weren't. My dad was like, "What the heck you do?" <laughs> but anyway, what I ended up doing, I'm in South Australia, Adelaide. I ended up packing them my bags in the back of a like in the back of my car in bin bags. And like drove to Sydney from Adelaide. And I was like, I'm doing this. And on the way there, I closed three clients because another friend of, of his name's Joshua Tay, and he actually used to run Canvas Cultures. And he, he was in LA at an event and I was doing his marketing because, you know, Murray had put me on to him and he's like, oh, can you do it for me? So I built a couple of his systems, his pop-ups and everything. I actually got really good at pop-ups from day one. Um, and whilst he was there, everyone was like, I need an email marketer. Does anybody know of anybody? And, and Josh has always got a lot of influence. He's one of those guys that just carries himself so well. And he's just magnetized, like people are magnetized to him. And all of a sudden, Josh is like, oh, I've got a guy. And I just all of a sudden, I'm driving up to Sydney, packed my bags in the back of my car, left my job, the, two months from being fully qualified to go chase something that everybody thought was a dream. And all of a sudden, I start getting these phone calls on like Facebook. And I'm like, hey, what's up? And he goes, oh, I just spoke to Josh at the event. Apparently, you're an email marketer. Can you do my emails? I closed three clients on the drive up there. And my income literally 5x, 6 Actually, I think I 10x my income because I wasn't making much. Yeah, I literally 10x my income in that whole drive up there. 
And I'm such a believer that that was the universe. And I love the quote from, um, from Tony Robbins. You know, if you want to take the island, burn your boats. Burn the bridges. Yep. Yeah. So if you want to take the island, burn your effing boats is what he says. Every single time I think of that in my head. And that's what I did. I, I wanted to take the island. I didn't want to do this anymore. I didn't want to be an electrician. I had to burn my boats. Plan A had to... Well, sorry. Plan B was that plan A had to work. Right? I had yeah, no other choice I, anymore. I, I feel your pain. I did the same thing. I left cushy government job working. Um, I, you know, rostered day off every second week and guaranteed money. All the things. And was just like, no. It, like you said, got to burn the bridges. Because I think if you have that safety net, you right. don't push yourself. It's kind of like why I think people who, like people who really stretch them, like you did, people who stretch themselves to join a program or people who start, you know, bootstrap a company or you go through a, a phase where it's like, shit, I've got no money. That is when it all changes. Because if you always have the safety net, there's never that, that, you know, hunger, I guess, you know, that I have to do this or, yeah you know, the world's going to fall apart. So yeah, yeah great. It's, it's and, and now true. all these years later, here you are making yeah. millions for lots of different brands. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy ride, but that's kind of like, it's a, I said quite a long story, but I said long story short, but there's a longer <laughs> version, I promise. If anybody ever wants to hear it, reach out to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's, that's literally how I got into email in the first place. It was almost an accident. I just remember him saying, what are you good at? And I was like, I don't know. I'm 20 years old. I don't know. I'm good at writing. I'm good at selling. I'm good at talking. What do you want? And he goes, can you do email? And I was like, I can learn. And then here I am. Email's just and, talking, but in words. It's, yeah. you know. That's and I think exactly you, what he said. It's, it's literally just talking in words. If you, can, if you can write and you can sell, he says, all that is, he's just putting that into words. Mm, mm. So before we jumped on this, before we press record, we were talking about how so many retail and e-commerce store owners, I guess, not neglect, but they put off an email person in their team, whether that's an agency or in-house or whatever. And I said, it's funny because it's actually the second person that I tell all of my students to hire. The first one is someone to look after your money, whether it's bookkeeper, accountant, VCFO, whatever. Yeah, the I next person, real quick. the next person is an email marketer because it is so easy to see their results. And to be honest, it is so easy to get almost instantaneous results. Yeah. So yeah. if you are thinking, who should I hire? Trust me, it is not a freaking social media manager. It yeah. is an email marketer. That is your next hire before anyone else. Yeah, I agree with that because the thing with an email, like the thing with your list is it is actually very easy to become unengaged. And I've seen so many brands come to me and they're at 100,000, 200, 300, 400,000 lists that they've not really touched in a year. Like, oh, we sent like a campaign once in six months. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> so sorry to let you know this, but the list you've just been building for the last four or five years, I guarantee that 80% of it is gone. Gone. Yeah. It's and burned. it's because if you don't reach out, they don't know who you are. And you got to remember, everybody, I think the average adult receives 126 emails a day or something. Uh, yeah, I reckon I would get more than that. Yeah, yeah, people like us, absolutely. I've got my click up going off. I got my job. I got everything. Yeah. Just letting me know. Oh, you got these recaps, these updates, and everything like that. So we'd receive definitely more. Um, and the average adult, your consumer, is receiving 126 um, emails a day. It is. It only takes days to forget about you. Yeah. And yeah. in email, we call it recency and frequency. So you got to be the most recent, and you got to be the most frequent. So I like to send three times a week, and people go, "Well, Jace, I don't know what to send." Well, luckily, you have ChatGPT. Oh, no. I mean, when people say to me, I don't know what to send, I'm like, well, I did. I actually did an Instagram Live the other day and I said, I didn't know what to say today. So I wrote in ChatGPT, what should retail and e-commerce brands post on Instagram? Bang, yeah. 10 things. And they were 10 good things. It's actually, it's scary how Freakily good scary. <laughs> it's It's so good. You can tell it to pretend to be like a social media marketing expert who specializes in e-commerce and then it will get even better. Yeah, it will only get better, right? Yeah. And we're not saying you shouldn't just you know cut and paste, but the simple thing is there is no excuse in this no. day and age to say, I don't know what to send. No, but what you, what you can do is... <laughs> I'm a little bit cheeky. You can, you can tell it to come up with the content and then you can put that content into Quillbot. Oh, I don't know what Quillbot is. What's that one? Quillbot's a paraphrasing 
AI, but it makes uh, the content sound more human. So it uh, will, I think it like de-plagiarizes it too because like it completely <laughs> changes the content. Yeah, ChatGPT can plagiarize quite a lot, but that's only if you're doing articles or like blog posts yes, or, you know, like yeah. something for school. So if you're not doing that and you're just doing an email, uh, like I'll stick to the email like idea just because that's what I do. But you can literally be like, I need you to write a full email uh, sales on this, this and this. The more information you give it, the better. Also tell it to behave like, you know, a professional copywriter who specializes in e-commerce email and then always ask it, do you understand? So it locks that, that in. Um, and then, yeah, once you like have it write it out, you can ask it for three different versions as well. You can ask it for subject lines as well. But once it's written out the content, I throw it into Quillbot and then Quillbot like paraphrases it. And then there's also AI content tools. So you can be like, uh, uh, it's an AI contact detect- content detector. And basically, you can throw in your copy and I'll be like, oh, this is 100% written by an AI. We can tell. And then you throw it through something like Quillbot and it's like, oh, this is written by a human. So, But so, what you have done then is you've taken, let's be honest, there are people here who are listening, who are doing their own emails, who, are, who tell me, oh, it takes me two hours to send an email. And I am seriously like WTF. I could have written a month's emails in yeah. two hours. And you have just said within five minutes, here is how you can write an email. So stop uh, making yeah. excuses. You can ha- you could have an email. I wouldn't say designed, but you could because de- I think design is important these days depending on your brand. 99% of brands are still... I do think... Oh, this is a good argument as well. A lot of people... Do you remember when you used to say back in the day, it's like, oh, like more text, less Im- images. Definitely think that's shifted. That's changed, yeah. Yeah, but it's because... I, I, I can quite happily in an e-commerce brand send out a Clavio personalized product box with no words and make money. Like that's the, I can't yeah. be stuffed sending an email. Just put a product box in. Yeah. We thought you might like this. I think every, I think a lot of brands like, uh, <laughs> this is always embarrassing to say, but it's also like such a great point. Uh, have you ever heard of Honey Badette? Yes. So I, have, I, I believe I have a very gorgeous wife and I go on Honey Badette. I always get emails from them. I get Honey them, Burdett I get, is very sexy, high-end lingerie. Correct. Yeah. So I get emails from them almost daily. And I, I'll be honest, I do buy quite a lot because they're emails. But <laughs> what I realized as a consumer, the one thing that I love and why I never unsubscribe from them is it's so interesting to me as a consumer because this is the only one of the only things I'll ever buy from an email is that my consumer behavior kicks in I don't care. So there's, there's two points I want to get out here. When people think about... You might get somebody to go, oh, I can get you into Inbox. Like, skip the promotions. And it's like, Google is a billion-dollar company and their product is to filter out things that are relevant to you. Yeah. Inbox is for conversations with people that you know or like very urgent things. Promotions is for when people are sending you a promotion. It's pretty obvious. Updates is for like, you know, access to your codes or access to your training programs or, you know, access to an app. That's the way they're structuring it. And that's where it's going to go. If you think you can be inbox, you might do it once or twice, but it's never going to do it for long. So I'd rather focus on making my email really, really good once you get to promotions. And Clavio did a study that showed that if they landed in inbox or promotions, the bottom line didn't matter. When it came to it, maybe opens increased. Maybe, well, opens may have increased because it was an inbox, but it never increased the click and it never increased the sale. Because... When people click on the promotions tab, they have the psychological intent of now buying or being promoted to. Yeah, they know what's going to be in there, right? Yeah. It's like this is where all my newsletters are going to go. Right, and they, and they expect to be sold to when they click that tab. So now they're open to it, and their psychology and their intent has changed. And I'm the same. I click that promotions immediately. I'm expecting to see a promotion. I see Honey Bidet, and I always click because I'm curious what they've got. And I realize I call some brands a show don't tell, right? And this is a show don't tell brand. Clothing, art, lingerie, anything that's visual, anything that I'm buying, you don't really have to say anything. It is a show, don't tell. I realize 99% of the time, and this is so, this is another thing when you're creating an email, and I'll explain why I say this, but there's three questions I always tell myself that my customer is asking. They say, What do you want? What do I get? And how do I get it? I want to answer all those questions immediately. Above the fold, when they open up, and if guys, anybody doesn't know, above the fold means the moment you click something and there's a cutoff at the bottom of your screen, that is now above the fold. Anything that just your page lands on and you can see is above the fold. So I want to answer all those questions above the fold. So what do you want? Well, I got 20% off. Well, what do I, well I, w- I want to let you know there's a sale on. 
well, what do I get? Well, you get 20% off. Well, how do I get it? Well, you click this button here and you can shop now. And then go down the screen and it depends on your brand, supplement brands, they're a very tell, don't show. Yeah. Right? Because you need to be explained to them. You need to sell them. You need to persuade them. But a brand like Honey Badette, it's a very show, don't tell. So I realized I only ever read the offer at the top. I skip all the text. I never even look at the buttons. You could not put a button in there and I would still click on the, the piece that the I was pictures. curious about. Yeah. So kind of going back to it, why did I mention all that? Is because some brands, if you're a very visual brand like clothing, lingerie, you know, even, even pots and plants. I don't oh, care. for sure. Yeah. I'm going to click on the one that I want to see. So you could be very visual. You could be very show, don't tell. And you could just really create a very, very cool email. It, that's, that doesn't take much. To come up with an offer, you know, it, you don't even have to have a big offer. It could be like, hey, like check out today's like hottest plants, yeah. right? And then they could, you could shop now hottest plants and it could be a collection of the hottest plants or they can scroll down and click on the one that they're interested in. Just like one of those little formats that goes down. And that right there, you send that out. It'll take you, what, half an hour to put that together? At best, at if best, you're yeah. Slow, yeah, that's it. When you, you have money. segmented your list, yeah, the segmenting is where it does get a little bit more difficult, and that's why I, um, I like to make sure. So there's actually a couple of different ways, and I will, I will mention as well. I do think it's important to have infotainment and entertainment to your list. I think delivering value to your list is very, very important. We have every single list I ever work with ends up being that their 30 day engagement is 60 to 70 percent of their list. Simply yeah. because we reach out three times a week at minimum, not including our retargets that we talked about. Um, and what that means is that one or two of them might be sales, but one or two of them might be infotainment. And I all, always like it to be relevant. The Super Bowl just came up. We wanted to talk about the Super Bowl to our list. You know, we, we always want to be relevant. Valentine's Day came up. We want to talk about Valentine's Day. Always being relevant and delivering value to our audience means that the conversation has now shifted from being very like take, take, take to give, give, take. And okay. That changes. We, we the need whole to dynamic. get into the we need to get into the Trojan horse method. Otherwise, this is going to be like a three hour was episode, it, even though it, you and it, I both talk really fast. <laughs> it was primarily focused on email for now. But look, so I understand email is very easy. I know it sounds daunting. It's very easy to do. Chat GPT, show don't tell, and big cool offer box. up front. Yeah. Easy done. You can crank out an email within half an hour. But then, like you said, we want to talk about the Trojan horse. And this is something that's really exciting to me because it's already... So the Trojan horse has already helped contribute to north of 20 to 25 million in the last year. And that's what we want to hear. We want the yeah. secrets. That's why people are listening. So if you've made it this far, first and foremost, I, uh, I applaud you because you might have listened to all that going, I signed up for SMS and this is all email. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will tell you. So... The Trojan horse is something that I, I come, and my, uh, my wife says it all the time. She says like Trojan horse, like TM. Cause like this was my method. I made it up. And I, the reason, the, the way I made it up, right? I've been, I've been in this weight loss process for, you know, a couple of years, like everybody does. And I realized I got a little bit fat. And then I was like, oh, I should really take it back a notch. And I started like, as I go to a drive through, I don't go to takeaway very often. But if I do, I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to make a smart decision and get less. So one day I went to a McDonald's or something. I think I was just on the road. And um, I was like, hey, can I just get a regular meal? And she's like, yep, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And then I got to the, the front and she's like, hey, do you want to upgrade that for just a dollar? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, why in the world did I immediately respond with, yeah, sure. I didn't even think about it. And um, I realized there's two things that happened. Is when somebody says yes, it's much easier to get them to say yes again. Yes again. So I'd already said yes to buying. I'd already taken out my wallet. I'd already ready and prepared to spend the money. We all know this through upsells, right? But it's the same thing. I used the same method with a Trojan horse. Is I knew it was easy after somebody said yes to get them to say yes again. So using like the, the tripwire or the, the free plus method, I was like, well, I could do the same with an email. And email is very, very, very low friction. It's very easy to get your email. I've even been into a club and asked a girl for a number. And she says, I'll give you my email. That's how <laughs> low value. That. <laughs> that was embarrassing, by the way. I, I said, no, thank you. That was before the wife, guys. Just to That be was clear. before the wife. <laughs> <laughs> that was last weekend. <laughs> Um, so I realize how low value an email is to somebody now. We are all used to it. And so I think Trojan a lot of, method, just, just to throw that in there, I think we all have at least two emails. And so we have uh, the email. I know that we have the same thing, even in our company, we have the email we use to subscribe to newsletters. Yeah. You kind of got your one that you send from and then your personals. Yeah. Yeah. We have hello at. That's always ours. 
<laughs> kind of the one that everybody gets contacted from. Um, yeah, so I realized that email is very low friction. And I, I wondered what happened with the upgraded and what the psychology was. And I was like, imagine if I could do this on my pop-up. So the Trojan horse method, right? What it does, just for somebody who's like wondering, well, what the heck is a Trojan horse method? It's the ability to take an email and an SMS, capture them both in the same pop-up in the same step. So nobody goes anywhere. You'll capture their email and their SMS at the exact same time. The beauty of that is that you capture their email up front so you never lose emails. A lot of people will come in and they'll put SMS in front of emails and or just scrap. This is a couple of brands I worked with actually, completely scrapped SMS, uh, email and stopped capturing emails and only started capturing SMSs. They do the upfront 10% off type in your number. And I was like, shit, you're losing so many email subscribers. And yeah. they're like, yeah, our email sales are going down. We're not really getting much opens anymore. I'm like, yeah, because your leads aren't fresh. Like, where are they all coming from? They're like, oh, we don't really know. And then I was like, all right, well, great. I have a solution. So what I do, and everybody take notice because this is going to be the outline structure and I'll teach you how to do it as well. What you're going to do is you're going to say, and this is the method that I use every single time. And I use this on the UDI and doubled their opt-in. I said, you've unlocked a mystery discount. Are you ready to see what you got? Enter your email and reveal my code. Once they say yes, enter their email, reveal my code. Boom, caught their email, done. Now, the second step of that pop-up is going to tell them what they unlocked. Congratulations, you got 10% off. Now, this is up to you. I highly encourage you to do what I call a double the discount. But I have three different methods here. You can do what I call a convenience offer. Actually, sorry, four. I have a convenience offer, which is you can just say, hey, would you like to join the SMS club? And we'll text you the 10% code. So it's just convenient, right? You might yeah. want to, you might prefer to be communicated via SMS. And people go, no, like SMS is frustrating and annoying. Oh, for you, a lot of people love it. I'm the type I prefer to be text because I won't get your email. So if I like you as a brand, and this is the key point that people miss when they go, oh, like I don't want to be annoyed. If I like you as a brand, I will want to be communicated by you. So yeah. you have to make your brand likable. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and, and I know personally that I subscribe to brands who every like big department store, Maya, every weekend I'm getting a 30% off message. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's to the point where I don't even read them now. Like there yeah. is nothing special about it. And it's a brand I shop at for convenience, not because I love everything that they do. And so I yeah. end up opting out because I'm like, yeah, you'll send me an email. Like this is not on the top of my priority yeah. list. It's not a brand that you're in love with. If you no. love the brand, I mean, if Honey Bidette did that, I'd probably be on their list. <laughs> so what I realized is, so we have the convenience offer. So it's like, hey, we might be giving away 10%. You've unlocked 10% in the email, but hey, conveniently, I can send you a text and send you the same offer. Or the next one is an upgraded offer. I can upgrade your discount by joining the SMS. So you might go from 10% to 15%. And then um, you give them the, the option to choose. This is So there's, there's two things that are going on here that's powerful. Actually, probably three. The first one is it's already saying yes to a low friction offer. Now, once they've said yes, it's much easier to get them to say yes again. Psychology of sales. Everybody knows that. They said yes to email. It's much easier to get them to say yes again. Now, we're also giving them the power of choice. They think they're in control. Yes, I'll upgrade. Or no, just email. Either way, I win. Either way, I've got your information. Either way, I'm going to send you an offer. Yeah. So you have the power of choice. You feel like you chose your journey, but at the end of the day, it still resulted in where I wanted you to go. One or the other. You just told me your preferred communication channel. Correct. Then and you, uh, power, to a degree, they also told them told you how much they like you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially with the convenience offer. If they if they say yes to that, I know you like the Udi. Originally, we were doing the convenience offer, and we were getting twenty to thirty percent. Say yes, just text mm -hmm. me. So you have to that that indicates to us twenty thirty percent of the audience prefers to be text yeah. than to do email, and that's a huge number when you think about it. That's like a lot. Prefers to be communicated via text. There was no bonus offer. The moment we went to a bonus offer, it went from 30% to 60%. So you've literally <laughs> just doubled your communication channels. Correct. But we're still yeah. capturing email up front. So you still get their email. You're still building your list up front. That never changes. Yeah. Right. So then the upgraded offer, there's also the psychology of upgrade. Just like if you go to McDonald's, do you want fries with that? Do you want to upgrade your, your uh, do you want to upgrade to a large? Our brain likes to upgrade. It's a very easy thing to do. It's nice language. So I said, do you want to upgrade your discount to 15%? 
my favorite one, which is the third one, um, it's just it's it's my it ties the, the it ties with fourth as my favorite, right? But the third one is, do you want to double your discount? Whoa, 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 Jace, I can't I can't give them twenty percent. Understood. If you are a brand that doesn't have those margins, don't do it. But if you are a brand that does have those margins, understand that SMS has an average open rate of ninety eight percent. If you if you're listening to this podcast right now and you're thinking to yourself, ah, that's cool. Where is your mobile phone? I guarantee for like 98% of the audience, it's within reach and distance. And I guarantee you when you get a message, you read it. Correct. That's it. I think they say that statistically, 98% of messages are read within the first four hours. I, I wouldn't even thought that long. Like, I, think it, I think it could be an hour as well, but I think to be safe, somebody said four hours. Yeah. But it, it, I think Postscript say it's 98% within the first hour. Yeah. And, and I just think that just because giant. it annoys you doesn't mean it annoys your customer because you are not your best customer. <laughs> again, again, you've got to like the brand. Yeah. And you've like got to be sending you, out valuable like messages. Correct. And that's, that's, that's a conversation for another time because there's like, there's, there's ways to send text. I'm a big, I don't love to send sale, 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 but I do think it, SMS has to be high impact, very, very CTA driven. Mm-hmm. You can't, it ha, because it's, it's an expensive channel once you build up, depending on where you are in the world and where your audience is too, it can be a very expensive channel. So we need to make sure there's an ROI on every message. So every, every message to me has to have a CTA. There's no fluff. There's no cuteness. There's no like, Hey, how you doing today? It's A, I have something I want you to buy. And I'm not going to text, like, I'll email you three to five times a week, but I will not text you that many times. I'll text no. you once at max. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So going back to it. So what you would do is you'd have the power of choice, which was, yes, upgrade me. So whatever you choose, the fourth one would be a free product, right? That's the best one. Um, I, see, I want to talk to you about this because I'm not a fan of discounting. And I was actually going to, if we have time, can we, because you work with lots of bigger brands where they can afford those margins. Yeah. But I'm curious. Of the more boutique brands that you work with, when it comes to CLV, customer lifetime value, and even average order value, what do you see as the return for discount-based offers versus something like a value add, like a free product, a gift with purchase, something along those lines? Um, I see that the free product works very well, but it doesn't get much of a conversion rate. So it... It gets a lot of people to say, yes, I want the free product, but to actually get through and take the free product is very, very difficult because the way Shopify works, it's not easy to add on a free product unless somebody knows better than me. But every single brand I've ever worked with, we've struggled adding a free product um, simply because you have to teach the customer to go get it and then add it to their cart. And don't worry about the cost of it because it will be free when you get to the checkout. It's very hard to explain in a text message. Mm. So that's always been our biggest... uh, is. If Shopify came up with the ability to like, when you add a code, it just adds a product. I think there is a way to do that. But I'm pretty sure me, there's a plugin that does that. I, yeah. Yeah. But finding it and making it work's always been problematic for us. Every single brand I've ever worked with, it's just been, it's just been a nightmare to get it to work. Mm. So if Shopify came out with a way to be like, Hey, like, do you know want to just add a free product with a code? And we could just in a snapshot, literally make it easy. Cause the way that Shopify builds their stuff easiest, you know, heck to yeah. understand. But that's why I like to go with direct offers. The reason being is the psychology behind it. And you might say like, oh, I don't want to give away 10%. You really should have 10% in your margins to give away to somebody. And if you don't, you need to up your margins because you can't be operating that razor thin. But if you don't want to double your discount, if you want to just upgrade it or do the convenience, it doesn't matter. Either way, you'll still capture people. I mean, it's about testing, right? At the end of the day, we can say what you prefer. I can say what I prefer, but it's got nothing to do with us. We're just giving our opinions on things to try because it comes down to your customer. What I do know is the psychology behind when somebody signs up for a discount is that they they sign up because they want to they want to buy that product, but for a discount. How does that work with like I don't sign up to Louis Vuitton expecting a discount. No, it's Louis Vuitton. But at what point do we go from, I guess, like FMCG, the fast-moving consumer goods, to actually, I'm not here for a discount? What do you think the answer is? I believe there's a, I, I believe there's a time for a discount with every brand, apart from the Louis. But that's, they're the exception to the rule. Okay. You know, you've got your, you've got your, if you've got your extremely luxurious high-end consumers, like, you know, we, we could say Lamborghini is one of them. 
of course, that's that's the exception to the rule. But then every other brand that doesn't, if you're not a high end luxury consumer brand that's you know that's rep by all the rappers in the world, well then you you might have to give away a discount. But okay. then the moment that the rappers, you know, and and artists and celebrities are wearing your stuff, then you can stop because now you have influence. And it's like all about having enough influence in your brand that you have the perceived value. But most brands aren't there, even brands like Dodi. Yeah. You know, they're still going to give away like products. It's, it's one of those things that people expect. It comes to Valentine's Day. I expect a discount. It comes to Black Friday. I expect a discount. If you don't give me one, who do you think you are? Is I'm I'm sorry. Is Sam Smith wearing your gear at a at a at a show? <laughs> no. Well, then shut up. I oh, think yeah. I think we could talk about <laughs> this for a very long time. So Trojan Horse Method is yep. the, the the concept, the overall concept for those who are playing along and are writing this down is one: we capture their email with an offer. You yeah, like so a, discount. a mystery discount? Mystery discount, and then on the the next page, for want of a word, the next screen. Step two. Step two is getting giving them an offer. In your case, it could be upgrading or it yep. could be doubling the discount in order to get the text message because this is very frictionless. This is, yes, I want the thing. Now I've captured their, their SMS. Yeah. And let me explain something too, Selena. A lot of people go ahead and say, hey, like, you know, to get your uh, discount, all you got to do is finish off by giving us your SMS. But I'm giving Honestly, you something. Yeah, like that's that's like asking twice. You know, I'll get your email. Oh, by the way, you're one step away. Just give us your phone number and then we'll give you that discount. Now I'm annoyed. Le- yeah, you know, Liam Neeson somewhere saying, I will find you and I will kill you. Because they're like <laughs> holding their rans- you know, holding their discount at yeah. ransom. That's a horrible thing to do. My wife signs up for so many different like, you know, brands. And the moment they do that, she just goes, ugh. I'm with, like, I'm with her. Out. I'm just like, ugh. This is just like, you aren't smart enough to work out how to get my nah, phone number. So scammy too. It's like really... Yeah. But yeah, so like you said, so then there's that final upgrade. Now, so they're gonna you're gonna have two options. There's gonna be yes, upgrade me, or no, thank you. I'll stick with my email, right? If they say no, take them to a normal thank you page that says, Hey, like, congrats, thank you so much. Look for an email from us, it's coming to you. Your discount code will be there soon. If they say yes, there's two things that we need to do. I use Optim uh Optimunk. To me, the best pop-up builder on the planet. It integrates with everything that I need. And it also has a couple of different things that, I, that I'm that i going to mention here that is absolutely essential. So to do any of this, you need to have Optimunk, right? So Optimunk will allow us to build these beautiful pop-ups that are really frictionless on our website. It doesn't affect the speed or anything like that. So to me, every single brand I ever work with, this is what I use. And there's another reason. Is that to do this method, I need to have a like so I need to have a submit with a mobile phone field on desktop. So they will type in their mobile phone, press submit, and then I will text them. Um I use Postscript for my SMS, Optimunk and Postscript both so I like integrate and I can say send this keyword to Postscript and then it will send it back. And you do that in the back end, you'll figure that out. But what happens is then you want to turn it into like a responsive. So you want to hide the, the mobile button, sorry, the button on your desktop and the field. You want to hide it responsively on desktop. And then on mobile, you want to bring another button in and you want to hide that. Like, sorry, you want to hide it on mobile and then hide the mobile one on desktop. So, you know, they're hiding from each other. Yeah, so you've it's got two buttons, shown. but one's two showing on buttons. desktop, yeah. one's showing on mobile. Correct. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't get it out. <laughs> um, so now that you've got the mobile button, we need to do something which is kind of tricky. And again, only Optimunk, as far as I know, will allow us to do this. We need to create this custom code, right? And I use ChatGPT to do it. I'm more than happy if you want to put it in your show notes. So if anybody wants to go into the show notes, I'll put the custom code. I'll, pu- I'll put a link to the custom code. So I'll give you one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's basically just my SOP inside my ClickUp, but I'll make it you know public so everybody can see it. That's very generous. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And literally all you'll have to do is go into... Um, there's going to be bolded areas that you have to change. Fill in the blanks, yeah. Yeah. And then once you do that, once you fill in the blanks, it's very, very easy for you to just hit go and ChatGPT will write the code for you. But basically, it writes this SMS URL code that you're going to put in as like a a submit URL and it's going to open up a URL and it's actually a a pre-populated text message. And it's going to say like, you know, to to, um, subscribe to this brand and receive whatever discount you gave them which you would say like 10% or, you know, 20%. Or the, upgra- the upgraded offer. Yeah. yeah. 
to receive the upgraded offer, all you got to do is send this message. And when they send it, they immediately skip any double opt-ins because what's happening is we're sending into their into the system. The system is seeing They've already code. opted in Like first. it sees our number yes. and it knows 100%. That's exactly who we are because we sent in to opt-in. It's compliant. We also, we also have to have the compliant language under our opt-in button, but I can screenshot that or something. All of a sudden, you've got it. It sends it in because it has a keyword linked into it. Again, you'll see it on the document. It'll say like the keyword has to be replaced. Once you replace the keyword and the offer and the phone number, again, all bolded out, easy for you to follow. Immediately, they hit send. They will receive a text message back that says, hey, you subscribe to you know whatever your brand's name is. And then the next message I'll receive is the keyword reply that you set up, which is here is your upgraded offer. Click here. What you're going to see, if people like your brand, they like the offer and they want the product, you're going to see anything from a 50 to 70% click through rate on that um on that message. Yay. You're going to see anything from a 30 to 50% conversion rate from that text message. And you're probably going to see if you've got a if you've got an AOV above 60 bucks, you're probably going to see anything from 20 to 50 dollars per receipt. So every single time we send that text message, we're making 20 to 50 dollars. Okay. I mean, that is that little snapshot just there at the end, guys. Basically, what Jason is saying is if you use this strategy, you will make more money. And there's lots of things at play. The simple fact is someone really loves your brand and is going through these steps, but in a very frictionless way in order to get this discount to start shopping with you. So, I mean, you're not going to get those kinds of um, conversion rates through email. So, and and this is the whole, this is what we're trying to say when it comes to SMS is there is a way to make it frictionless and to make it not spammy, but also to, it's like a win-win, like customer wins because they've got something, it's it's instantaneous, I can start using it right now. And you're happy because now you have two ways to market to customers who actually want to buy from you. Yeah. And my, my other piece of advice would be using Postscript. I use Postscript. You can actually create this link that has the discount attached to it. Or you can use your own discount with them. Um, it can they can create their own discount with a timer. I like to set seventy two hours, um, and then once you've entered that and it's been seen in the text message, now when the customer gets to checkout, it's always going to automatically apply it. So I would I would just send them to your top selling like best selling product page, so that they can get back to their journey as fast as possible. The only other thing I wish we could do, and we can't do it, it's physically impossible, is I really wanted to like take somebody when they opt in. I mean, we could do it, but it'd be a very, very, very slow and laborious way to do it. And it might be that we have OptiMonk communicate with... Oh, I think I just figured it out. My <laughs> you, you've we, heard we it We basically first. <laughs> need to send them back to the landing page that they, they left from to limit the friction. Right now, a lot of brands will give you a discount and then send you back to the homepage. And you're like, ah, but I was... like, You interrupted me on the product that I wanted. Now I got to go physically find it again. Depending on how well your store is built, that could be difficult. <laughs> I feel like you must be able to do that because I use the shop back app. And when I click it in my Chrome browser, it opens the page and it says, you know, log in to shop back. And then it goes to the homepage, but then it almost immediately redirects back to the page that I was on. So there must be some, mm. maybe chat GPT could answer this for you. Yeah, it, it more than likely <laughs> could. I've been trying to figure it out with Postscript for a little while because when you opt in with a keyword, you're, it doesn't know what, what URL you're on because it doesn't get that information because I'm just sending a, a text message to you. Hmm. So the only way is by setting up keywords based on the page that you're on. Yeah. Right. And then that I think I feel through. like that's a conversation we could just sit here and like have a it glass of messy. wine and talk about it. <laughs> Apparently all the postscript dev team has been trying to figure out too that like it's not possible. <laughs> Unless we do specific keywords and we'd be like it'd be like, oh, upgraded and then whatever your PDP is, right? It might be like upgraded, you know, product one or like upgraded P1. I feel like you're probably losing people right about here. And it's probably yeah, no, a great place. It loses place. me too. I get bored as well. That. That's <laughs> why I'm not figuring to... it out. I'm like, ah, that's boring. But the, the thing that's exciting is if anybody implements what I just told them, like literally that was a that was a play-by-play word for word. I think it's literally how I build it out. I mean, this is something you would literally pay thousands of dollars for somebody to work out for you guys. Yeah. Like you, you like appreciate how much value Jason has just given you and how much money you could make when you implement this. In fact, that, that when you implement it... 25 mil so far. Yeah, like 25 million dollars. Right when you implement this, come back and tell us how much money it makes for you. Yeah. And if you need and help, he, contact Jason. Yeah, I was about to say, if you struggle, because it is, it is not an easy thing to do, 
unless like you've probably built a pop-up before. I'm assuming most people have a pop-up. All you're doing is adding an extra step. Yeah. I love uh, it. Extra I pop-up, love it. But it's pretty easy once you figure it out. All right. I think it's time to end there. Jason K. Williamson, not the country singer. I feel like you have to change the bearded marketer to not the country singer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and he should change to not the bearded marketer. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. If people would like to get in contact with you and talk to you about getting their email marketing or SMS marketing done, or maybe just hang out with you because clearly you're a very smart guy, Mm -hmm. where can they find you? Yeah. So my website is always the best place. It's every button you click on there, you'll be able to kind of have a conversation with me. So e2.agency, there's no.com, there's no.au. It's literally just e for echo to the numeral dot agency. That's it. It's one of those 2023 uh, domains. Um, it's, it's something like a creative agency would use. <laughs> yeah, do you know the amount of times I type that in on like those online, you know, like government stuff, and it's like that's not do a real sure. email. I know uh, my personal email is sal at, and then the next part is only five letters, and yeah. it is actually the whole email. But so often, Rebel Sport does this to me. It's like that is not a long enough email. You like, how dare you tell me? When I know how do you? Enough? That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I've experienced stuff like that. I know what everybody says that. But yes, yeah, so e2.agency, very, very simple. It's it's as easy as it sounds. You click on there, you can wander around my website. But most of the time, if you like book a call, um, it's going to take you through a quick little application because I do want to make sure you're an, you are an e-commerce store. Because if a coach or an agency or a bricks and more comes to me, I can help you, but I'm just not going to. It's not, you, you, they're not My your time people. is focused on e-commerce yeah. brands. So if you are an e-commerce brand, it's just going to quickly make sure you are. And then you'll be able to book a, a calendar with me. You'll be able to choose a time. Most of it's Australian. Sorry about that, guys. Um, if you're not Australian. And otherwise, you will jump on a call with me. And what I actually do on that call is I actually will ask you to send me your Clavio account. I'm going to go through um, probably 48, 72 hours before. I'm actually going to audit the entire account. And then when I jump on that call, I'm actually just going to tell you exactly what I would do to improve your sales. And then if somebody wants to work with me, great. If they don't, they have all of the strategies right there and then to do it. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. This has been like so many mic drops. Um, You're probably going to have to go back, bookmark this one. If you are listening on your favorite podcast app, click the save button because you are going to want to implement this, guys. Jason K. Williamson, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And hopefully I didn't lose too many people. I do realize it's a lot of complexity, but hopefully you can, like Selena says, go back, keep taking notes, keep doing your thing, keep going back through it. And I promise you, if you implement any of that, I swear to you, it will make money. Oh, the guys, the, the guys and girls listening it. are very smart cookies. So I'm sure that they'll jump in and get started. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, I'm, I'm glad to meet everybody. Hopefully I dropped enough value. And thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Jason. So that's a wrap. I'd love to hear what insight you've gotten from this episode and how you're going to put it into action. If you're a social kind of person, follow me at The Selena Knight and make sure to leave a comment and let me know. And if this episode made you think a little bit differently or gave you some inspiration or perhaps gave you the kick that you needed to take action, then please take a couple of minutes to leave me a review on your platform of choice. Because the more reviews the show gets, the more independent retail and e-commerce stores just like yours that we can help to scale. And when that happens, it's a win for you, a win for your community, and a win for your customers. I'll see you on the next episode.